Well, now that we've finished our discussion of word formation in English and Arabic, let's move on to our next topic, which as we can see from the list here, is giving an orientation to the 10 forms chart. So everyone hopefully has this chart here. It came with as a supplementary material to this video. So take it out. We have a big one to put on the screen. We're going to follow along together. So we want to move across from right to left through the column headings of this chart. And the first thing we bump into, going right to left, is this word here, al-wazan. Now what does al-wazan mean? Well, one meaning is a weight, but we don't mean that here. It can also mean a form. In this case, it's giving us the form number. Notice we have 1 through 10 of the Roman numeral system. Please note, interestingly, these form numbers, 1 through 10, are actually not a native Arabic tradition. It's something taken from the West. The Arabs tended to refer to their verbs with a different convention. They looked at the number of letters in the past tense. And so, for example, look at the Mahdi column here. If you look down a little bit, I have, for example, form 3, Fa'ala, has four letters. The Arab grammarians call this ruba'i. You can hear the word arba in ruba'i, meaning a four-lettered word. The only problem, if you ask me, is look at the next one down, af'ala. It also has four letters. And look above at fa'ala. The shedda on the ayn makes an extra ayn. That's also four letters. The Arab grammarians called form two, form three, and form four all the ruba'i. So notice the consequence of all this. The Western system is a little more precise, a little more specific for referring to individual form numbers. So let's jump in then to our next column which is this column that says common meanings. This is going to be the essence of our chart. It's going to tell us what these different forms mean. It's something we're going to develop slowly, form after form after form. It's the very last part of our discussion for today. So we're going to come back to that in a little bit, our common meanings. And our next column, we're going to dwell on for a moment, is the Mahdi. Of course, the Mahdi means the past tense. Your third column is going to give you the past tense conjugation of your verb. You might be a little confused, though. Wait a minute. This whole table is for the verb fa'ala but I want the verb darasa, for example, or jama'a, or something else. What's going on? And moreover, it's conjugated for huwa, but I want maybe ana or nahnu. What's going on? <laughs> well, let's talk about this column in a little more depth. So a few things to note about the fitl mod. Number one, our chart is just giving us a conjugation for huwa. You have to extrapolate for the other pronouns. We'll do some examples in just a moment. And because of that, you might need to add suffixes to get your desired conjugation. So let's do a little blow up here. I've taken out two rows from the, from the table. I have al-wazan and the Mahdi. I have form one and form eight. Notice a few things here. First of all, it is true we're using the fa, ayn, and lam, which is a verb, fa'ala, which means to do something. However, this table is not unique to the verb to do something. It works for any verb, to study, to sing, to laugh, etc. Because we're using the fa, the ayn, and the lam as like wild cards in a sense. Really, the fa is a shorthand for the first root of your verb. And the ayn is a shorthand for the second root of your verb. And the lam is a shorthand for the third root of your verb. So, for example, let's take the verb darasa. Technically, we're going to call the dal the fa in darasa, and the ra the ayn in darasa, and the sin the lam in darasa. And this can lead to some confusion sometimes when students don't pay attention. And so what can happen is the teacher says something like, everyone look at the ayn in darasa. And one student says, there is no ayn in darasa. And you say, no, not the real ayn, as in the middle root letter, i.e. the ra. So please watch out for that. These are shorthands here. Because of the fact they're shorthands, you might note that on the board here, I haven't written anything on the ayn. I want to draw attention to this. If you look on your chart, you actually have three vowels. You have a fatta, you have a dhamma, and you have a kasra. Of course, the actual verb fa'ala, which means to do something, just, just, just comes as fa'ala, with a bit of fatta on top. But if it's a wild card standing for all verbs, I need all possible vowels. Because, of course, in Arabic, the past tense form one verb could be, for example, like darasa with a fatta on that ayn middle root letter. Or maybe like alima, let's say I have a kasra here. Or keruma, which means he was generous, with a dhamma on the middle root letter. So because this is a universal kind of indication here, I put all the possible vowels that you'll bump into in the course of your Arabic studies. So watch out for that. Notice, by contrast, below, form 8. Form 8 only has one option. It's always if ta'ala, never changes. Now, the question of course is, what if I don't want the hua conjugation? What if I want to say, for example, they did something? Well, I write the pronoun whom here. What you have to do is know your verb conjugations already, hopefully for at least form one. Hopefully at some point in your Arabic studies you did something like darastu, darasta, darasti, darasna, darastuma, etc., etc., etc. And you know that when I want to conjugate for whom in the fitl mod, what do I do? I add an alif, excuse me, I add a wow and an alif to the end. And so I'll write something like this. Fa'adu indicating here, the three root letters that come first, 
followed by this added suffix. And of course, you put a dhamma on the lamb letter to make way for that wow. So let's do an example. Let's say I wanted to try this for maybe the roots jim mim ein. So what do I do? I simply substitute in. The jim is the fa, the mim is the ein. It's a bit tricky. The ein is the lamb. So let's do it. Who's my fa? Who's my first root letter? It's a jim, followed by my next root letter, which is the mim, followed by my lamb letter, which is the ein, followed by wow alif. I vowel it accordingly. The fa is a fatta, so my jim is a fatta. The ein, we have to check in a dictionary. Unfortunately, for form one, it depends upon how the Arabs used it. In this case, it's a fatta. And the ein, here, it's actually a lamb over there, takes a dhamma. So I say, jama'u. All right. What about form eight? What if I want to say, if ta'ala, meaning something like to be gathered, I want to make it for whom? I.e., they were gathered. How do I do that? Well, same process. I think about what I added. So I added an u there, I add the same suffix to the form eight. So I say, for example, if ta'alu, exact same thing, right in the end. And then I substitute into this paradigm for the fa, the jim, for the ayn, the mim, and for the lam, the ayn. So let's do it. Alhamdulillah, fa letter is the jim. Then the form has an added ta. Then my ayn is the mim, my lam is the ayn, then my added wow and alaf to indicate the plural conjugation. Valid accordingly, exactly as it appears on the right. Kasra, sukun, fetta, fetta, dhamma, ijtama'u, meaning they were gathered. Let's move on now to the fourth column from the right. It's the column for the fi'l muldara, right here. So we can make a few comments about it. It's quite similar to the fi'l mod in two important regards. The first, of course, let's erase this circle, is that this table, as with the fi'l mod, is still conjugated for the hua conjugation, so watch out for that. And number two, you're going to need to add prefixes and suffixes in order to get the desired conjugation. Notice the fi'l mod, we just changed the ending, the fi'l muldara, we changed what's in front and what's at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at the table. I have a zoom in right here. Notice we have the wasn and the muldara in form 1 and form 8 this time. Notice I've left out the vowels on the ayn here. Why, of course? Because these letters, again, are still wild cards, and all possible vowels you'll find on the ayn in the Arabic language. For example, we have the verb yeftahu, which means he opens. That has a fatta on the ayn letter. We have the verb yadribu, meaning he hits. That has a kasra on the ayn letter. And we have yadrusu, meaning he studies. That has a dhamma on the ayn letter. So as you can see in Arabic, we have all three possibilities. Hence why in your chart, you have a fatta, a dhamma, and a kasra. And of course, the process is the same as before. If you want to conjugate form 8, just think about how you conjugate form 1. Let's do a scenario. Let's suppose you wanted to conjugate them both for anti. So I'll put the pronoun anti here. What do you do? Well, hopefully you remember from your tables that what do you do? You change this prefix right here, this ya, yeah, it's going to become a ta, because of course ta's go with the second person. I have to add something to the end, it's going to be ina. So let's put it down here. We say, can I get it? There we go. Def alina. So let's go ahead and map these roots onto the paradigm. First I have the ta, that's part of the pattern. Then the fa letter is a jim, so I'll put a jim there. And my ein letter is a meme, put that there. Lam is an ein letter, put that there, followed by ina. Just vowel these. The ta has a fetta, that's part of the pattern. Jim takes sukun, tej, like this. What about the meme? I put the fetta here, but the way you'd have to know that is by looking it up in the dictionary. You'd have to check and see is it tejma'u, tejmi'u, tejmu'u, or something like this. If you can check, it says tejma'u, so it's going to be tejma'ina, so put a fetta there. And the kasra on the, on the ayn here to make way for the ina sound at the end. So, what about form 8? How are we going to do that? Well, exact same process. Notice what we did. Again, on the right-hand side, we changed the ya yeah to a ta. So we got to change the ya yeah and yafta'ilu to a ta and something else. And we added ina to the end. So let's go ahead and do that here. I'm going to pop it on the board. There we go. Tefta'ilina. Again, notice what happened. The typical ta that's characteristic of the prefix of the antiform. And the ina at the end is characteristic of the suffix of anti at the end. And of course, the kasra to make way for that. So all we have to do is map the jim, the mim, and the ayn onto tefta'ilina. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I have a tab that's part of the pattern. Fat letter is a jim. I have another added tab part of the pattern, stick that in there. Ayn is a mim, lam is an ayn, add ina to the end. So I have this here. Let's vowel it. Ta takes fetta, fa takes sukun, tej, te, mi, ina. That's the correct way to vowel, tej, te, mi, ina. Or form 8 of G, me, mine. Hopefully that made sense. So let's move on to the next column.